Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Saints Church. Wow, we are asleep today. Good morning, welcome to Saints Church. Come on, why don't you stand to your feet this morning? We're so glad that you're here. It's a brand new year. It's a brand new year. Are we ready to kick off a brand new year in a big way, praising our King this morning? All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Now, hold on, hold on, hold okay. on. I don't think we're all ready yet. What we have to do today, because it's the first of the year, is today we're going to set the standard for how we're going to worship for the rest of the year. Okay? And you're like, oh man, I didn't, I didn't, I'm not emotionally prepared for this. Good thing you don't need to be emotionally prepared for it. You just have to decide. I have decided. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. The Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I will give all the honor and the glory and the praise. I've come to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I've come to declare that he is good and that he's worthy of my praise. I have come to lift him up and to magnify him and to glorify him. I have come to give thanks. I've come to give thanks and praise. I've come to declare that he is good and worthy of my praise. I have come to surrender and to submit myself before the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. I come to give him all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Now, I just need to say one more thing, team, and then we're going to go. Now, I'm going to say this a little bit later in the service, too, so if you came early, you get to hear it twice. We, our congregation is made up of people from all across the planet, which is a beautiful thing. But here's what, here's what I'm going to need you to do. If you're from somewhere else, if you're not from Canada, maybe you're from Nigeria, maybe you're from the Philippines, maybe you're from China, wherever you may be, what you need to understand today is that this is your church too. This is your church too. And so we don't need you to just blend in. We don't need you to blend in and, and be a polite Canadian. We need you to lead the polite Canadians and show us what it is to be passionate. Show us what it is to demonstrate our thanksgiving and our praise. I'm gonna need you. If, if you need to stand up and shout, you gotta stand up and shout. If you need to clap and sing and dance and whatever you gotta do, get those hankies out, whatever. This is your church. We're all in this together and we have come to bring the King of all Kings everything, all of our heart, our soul, our strength, everything that is within me, my heart and my flesh cry out for you, the living God. Come on. Are you ready to worship today? Are you ready to worship today? Come on. Let's go into the presence. Till I walk this 
the promises you can and every need you pay. I'm so great. You will win the lives, and I never will forget. Cause when I think of how you, how your hand has never let me.
he never lets go. We might try and let go. We might try and walk away, but he never lets go. Thank you, Jesus, that you never let go. Thank you, Jesus, that you never let go. He is so good. He is so faithful. He is so worthy of our praise. And sometimes I think we hold back on our thankfulness. And in this moment, can we just take the opportunity to thank him with everything we have, with your words, with your with your hands. Jesus, we thank you. We are so thankful for your goodness. We're so thankful for your kindness. We're so thankful for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for a new year. Thank you, Jesus, for a new year. We're just declaring that's gonna be a great year. 2024 is gonna be a great year in Jesus' name. It's gonna be a good year marked by the kingdom of God in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We're just gonna take a moment this morning. You know, our, our primary response is to his goodness and his faithfulness is gratitude and the way we do that is through our worship which we're doing and we're going to continue to do and the other way is through our obedience it's just asking or it's just doing sorry what he asks and calls us to do amen that's what it looks like that's how we show our appreciation that show how we show our love our 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 thankfulness to our king is just worship and obedience and so this morning as a part of our worship service, we're going to take up our tithes and our offerings, and I'm going to get our ushers to come forward. They can come up and get ready. Um, and as they do that, I just want to share. I was reading in, in Nehemiah chapter 10, and I love the book of Nehemiah because, man, I, I think it's, it's, they had to rebuild everything. It, to come back to a place that has been so decimated and so torn apart and so torn down and to come in and just be so determined to build God's house and to build his city, to build his kingdom and to build what he calls us to build is incredible. And in Nehemiah chapter 10, after they've been building, they've been building a wall and they've been building uh, the city and they come to a point where, where all of the people are gathered together and they do something. And I think it's really interesting because we, we're coming into a new year and oftentimes that's a place where we decide to set goals or, or we're gonna form new habits or we're gonna set, we have plans for what we're gonna do and promises that we make to ourselves and we usually break them within a week. But it's interesting that in Nehemiah, the people gathered all together and one of the things they did is they, they made a promise. And it says this, it says, the people, they solemnly promised to carefully follow all the commands, regulations, and decrees of the Lord. They just made a promise. They said, we're gonna, we're gonna follow what God's asked us to do. We're gonna, we're gonna be obedient to what God's asked us to do. And then you keep reading. And one of the things that they are promising to do is it to give the first of everything. That's their promise because they're gonna be obedient to what God's asked them to do. And so this morning, I'm not, I'm not standing here asking you to promise me something or promise anyone anything. I'm just asking you to consider a year that is marked by obedience to, to the call of God, to the things he's asked us to do, to, to, to giving back into his kingdom for his purpose, amen? And just watch what he can do with what we give. And he says to give the first. And sometimes that's hard. When you got bills coming, sometimes that's hard. But honestly, it's worth it because he is your provider. He will provide all that you need. That's who he is. That's who he is. It's who he declares himself to be. And so we can trust that if we are obedient, if we give the first of what we have, he's going to take care of the rest and then some, and then some. So this morning, I'm going to invite the ushers to pass 
the buckets through through the room. Uh, you can give that way. There's there's envelopes in the seat backs in front of you if you'd like to to fill those out and and uh, pop those in the buckets. Or you can give at our giving stations out in the lobby after service. Or you can give online. You're welcome to do that. Um, we've got a QR code that that will pop up on the screen if you want to use that to give today. Um, why don't you, uh, as we pass the buckets, just have a seat. I'm just going to share a few things with you. I promise I won't make you stand. This is not part of your New Year's res resolutions for uh, exercise. I'll let you sit for a minute. Um, just a couple things. First of all, if if you are new to our church family, to, to our church, we just want to say welcome. Uh, we're so glad that you're here. And we would love to meet you. We would love to get connected with you. Um, and so there's a couple ways that, that you can do that. Um, you can actually text. If you grab your phones, if you have your phones, which most of us do, you can actually text hello. Hello. So easy. Hello to 587-400-2010. And we will get you looped in to our church family and everything that's going on. Uh, and we'd love to meet you. Or you can head to our website, uh, saintschurch.ca or the connection desk out in the lobby and we can get you connected. One of the best ways to do that and now that we're in the new year and everything is sort of starting back up again, listen, the kids going back to school tomorrow and everything is starting up again and our groups and gatherings and all these things, the best way to stay connected and to know what's coming up is to make sure that you're signed up for our weekly email. It comes out every Tuesday uh, so you can sign up at the connection desk uh, or online on our website. Um, and that's where every week you're going to hear all the things that are going on, things that are coming up, things to mark your calendar with. And speaking of those things, um, the first thing I want to let you know is that we have prayer this Thursday, Thursday night, 7 p.m. here at the church, here in the sanctuary. Let's kick off this new year in prayer. We, we started in our pre-service um, prayer time, and we're going to just keep going on Thursday night. And we're excited to pray and worship with you. So come on out. We'd love to see you. We do that typically first Thursday of every month, though we pushed it back a week uh, because of the holidays. But we can't wait to see you out. And um, also, we have our Welcome to Church lunch coming the end of January. So if you are new to our church family in the last, like, six months or so, we really, really, really want to meet you. And we really, really, really want to feed you good food. So... Sign up for that weekly email and then sign up to come to our Welcome to Church lunch. We would love to have you. And we'd love to introduce you around to our team and some, some other amazing people that come to our church and get you connected. So we invite you to do that. Also, this morning, we have Rally 67. We have Rally 67. I think Pastor DeAndre has headed out uh, to the lobby already. If you have kids that are in grade 6 or 7, you can head out now to the lobby and Pastor DeAndre will meet you out there. Um, the first Sunday of every month, we have Rally 6-7. It's an opportunity for our grade 6 and 7 students to hang out, to have um, time geared just towards them and where they're at. And it's amazing. And our team does a fantastic job. So as they head out, uh, Lord, we just pray that they would um, have an amazing time. They would encounter you in Rally 67 this morning. Okay. Last thing for me, uh, I just want to let parents know uh, we do have a self-serve nursery out those doors, and we also have a mother's room out those doors there, out the exit doors. So if your kids are getting a little wiggly or a little bit um, unhappy sitting in the room, you can head out to either of those rooms. And actually, we have the service. Um, there's a live feed right into those rooms, so you don't have to feel disconnected from the service. You don't have to miss anything. Um, you can just head out there. So with that, I'm going to invite you all to stand back up and stand back up. And we're going to continue to worship. I would just encourage you. This is not a place to hold back. Jesus is worthy of all our praise. He is worthy. He is holy. He is righteous. And you will bless his heart in your worship and guess what in response your heart will be blessed because you will meet and you will encounter the king of kings 
And there is nothing that compares to an encounter with Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's continue to worship.
Let's sing that one more time, but this time let's put our hearts in a posture of praise for God this morning. So whether that's raising your hands or lifting your voices as high to the heavens, let's just get a posture of praise because he washes away every sin and every sickness and every darkness and everything that is in our lives to bring us new hope. So let's sing that one more time. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's sing that again. Just surrender. Cause what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's no one like you. There's no one beside you. Thank you, Lord.
be nervous, begin to sing your own song, begin to pray your own prayer, speak out your own praise and thanksgiving, come on let this room be filled with praise, gratitude, thanksgiving.
singing that because just a moment ago, I just felt like the Lord was just encouraging me that in this moment, He just wanted to pour out His love. He just wants to pour out His love. You might come in here today, and I don't know what your expectations are. You might even be wondering why we're still singing. But can I tell you that He wants to meet you right here. And you might come in here, and you might say, you know what, I'm not worthy, and I'm not enough. And nobody's ever seen me as significant. Nobody's ever seen me or loved me or cherished me. Can I tell you that your Father in heaven knows who you are? He knows you by name. He sees you. He sees you in this moment. And it doesn't matter what a spouse has or hasn't said in the past. It doesn't matter what your mom or dad didn't say in the past. What he declares over to you today is love, is love, is love. He loves you with an unfailing love. And he wants to meet you right here, right now. And we're going to get to the Word, but don't you worry about the Word. What you need to receive right now is His love. What you need to receive right now is His love. So here's what I want you to do. And we're going to do this together as a family so that we all feel like we're in this together. I just want you to lift your hands all across this place. Lift your hands. It's a sign of surrender. It's a sign of surrender. It's a sign to say, listen, I'm exposed. My heart is open. My heart is exposed. Jesus wants to come right now. He's going to come like a wave. There's going to be a wave of His Holy Spirit. And you're just going to start to feel love. And you're like, I don't understand what's happening right now. For those of you who are new, you've come to a spiritual experience. He's just going to meet you right where you are. You're even going to start hearing thoughts. There's going to be thoughts going through your mind that start saying, man, you are this and you are that. And it's going to start encouraging. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's putting courage into you today. He's putting courage into you today. He's putting courage. You're saying there's lies and there's been deceptions that have whispered all kinds of things. But today, His love is going to pour out all over you. So just get ready to receive His love today. Just get ready to receive His love today. And as you start to just get that sense, just start saying, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
get real quiet for a moment. Because I believe now the Holy Spirit just wants to speak to you and speak to your heart right here, right now. Sometimes we've learned to rely on the voices of others. But He wants to speak to you right here, right now. If you don't, if you've never experienced that before, it's going to come as a thought or an impression. Just this thing that you can't shake. And if you just want to posture yourself, you just close your eyes. I like to put my hands out in front of me like I'm about to receive something. He just wants to speak to you right now. He just wants to speak right now. In this place of surrender and humility. Speak now, Lord. Speak now.
Come on, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just give him some praise. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is in this place. 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 Well, why don't you find your seats? I should probably give some context to why we do what we do. Um, so it's our, it's my job, it's our job, Nathan's job, team's job, as worship leaders, and they lead the worship and I lead the service to just be obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit and be obedient to the Lord. And there are times and there are seasons, thank you, Pastor Brendan, there's times and seasons and moments and Sundays where it just goes where it needs to go and we just follow. And following Jesus is exactly that. That's what the Christian life is, is following Jesus. It's a journey. And when we think about worship, worship is like a river. And the river moves and it speeds up and it slows down and there's rapids and there's bumps and then it slows down and there's curves and then it opens up and then it gets really tight. And that's what worship is like. We just go down this river of worship and we go where he wants us to go. It's like we're all in this raft together. Anyone going whitewater rafting? It's like you go whitewater rafting and you just go and as you go, you, can, you, don't, you don't control it. And I think part of our hmm, problem is the wrong word. Part of our hardwiring as humans is we want to try and control where God wants to go. And we don't get to do that. Because if we got to do that, we'd be God. And there's times and seasons and moments like this where you might even hit a point where you say, yeah, I'm done. And you do have that free will choice. But can I encourage you to pass, push past the moment of comfortability? Because there's something waiting for you on the other side on that uncomfortable side, where we don't get to decide where he's taking us. We just get to go on the river. And you go, well, I've never been there before. I know. That's the adventure. I've never been there before. I don't know what's on the other side. I know. That's the part of us trusting Jesus. Well, but I, I want to know, know what's going to happen next. You don't get to know what's going to happen next. All we get to do is put our trust in Jesus and we follow him. And we lift him up and we magnify him and we do it with our whole heart because that's what he's asked. He's asked for this humble offering. He could ask for anything. And the thing that he loves most about uh, his relationship with us, the thing that he loves, the way that he loves to connect most is through us singing, which is like, you're like, I don't get it. And you might even think, man, I'm not even a good singer. But he loves the sound of your voice. He made your voice. He loves the sound of your voice. It's like when a little kid sings. They don't sing on key or in tune but you just love to hear him sing. He loves to hear you sing. And we're like, I don't get it. Like, that's not how I express it, but it's his love language. And that's how he's asked us to express our love and our gratitude. That's what, that's what he's done, and he loves. And this is what scripture says. It says that he sings over us, that he's singing over you. And I don't know how you grew up, but for me, um, I'm gonna expose my mom for a minute. She can't sing at all. And she'll tell you. Everyone's got a ministry. And so if you can't sing, don't join this team. But I can still remember the sound of her voice as she would sing to me as a little kid. And there's nothing more precious and there's no feeling of love like that. And that's what our Heavenly Father does. Is he sings over us. And he sings over his love. He sings truth. You know, all those lies that have been whispering in your ear, he starts singing truth over those lies. That's what he was doing right in this moment. He was just singing truth over those lies. And so we just had to wait. We just have to linger. Why? And you're like, well, you're like, how come you went back there? I went back there just to worship an ugly cry, okay? That's all. And because these guys are way better singers than I am, I'm just up here trying my best to ride the river with you, go where he wants to go to create a space and place that he can speak and do what he wants to do. 
<laughs> funny thing about today is that I actually had like probably the longest message that I've ever written in my life prepared for today. <laughs> probably won't get there. Uh, <laughs> but that's okay because that's my plan. Come on, that's my plan. He's like, nah, you're good. You can tighten it up. But Lord, I got good stuff today. He's like, no, that's fine. Uh, we do believe that God speaks um, actively and presently right now. And he does that through people and their spiritual gifts. And um, one of the things we're doing in 2024 is we're actually building an online digital discipleship platform with all kinds of teaching and different content. One of the things we're going to teach you about is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, but we just have to take a moment for me to just slip into that mode for a minute. And I just need to speak to Matt for a minute. Matt, I believe that there's been all kinds of things that have been creeping in uh, into your mind and some of the things that you're facing. And there's all kinds of uncertainties uh, and all kinds of question marks. And the Lord just wants you to know that those, most of those things that you've been running and the scenarios that you've been plotting out are just exactly that. They're just whispers. And that he's going to start to whisper into you the strategy for the next season. And he's already beginning to just kind of drop some of those things into your heart and into your mind. And I believe it, it's, it's, multiple, it's in multiple facets. I believe there's a business strategy that he's going to drop into your heart and mind that's going to get un, un, unfold. Uh, I believe things about your health. He's going to drop those strategies in and then things for your family. And it's going to happen just kind of in very um, uh, normal, boring ways. So just make sure you're ready to write things down because you're going to be on the job site and things are just going to pop into your mind. You just got to write it down in the moment because that's actually the voice of the Holy Spirit just speaking to you. Because here's a lesson for all of us. Oftentimes the Holy Spirit speaks best to us when we're doing um, very passive activities. Because <laughs> your brain is focused on something else so he can actually speak to your heart. That's why he speaks to you in the shower. You're like, why do I get my best ideas there? Because you're just like, you, you, and you've turned off the noise for a moment. Some of the best places the Lord speaks to me is when I wash my car. If I don't know, if Desiree can tell you, if, if, if I'm struggling to prepare for a Sunday, I go to Hughes Wand Wash and I just wash the car. Because for some reason, the Holy Spirit meets me there. And it's probably because I just get out of my own head. We'll open the scripture in Revelations 2, verse 4. Speaking to the church of Ephesus, through John in a revelation. Yeah, well, new, new year, last book. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Another translation says, you have lost your first love. You've lost your first love. If I had to put my finger on why we're starting 2024 in this way, in, in, a, in, a, in an extended worship, because nobody planned that. The last, like, six songs, nobody, nobody had any idea what was happening. Thank God for a great team. If I had to guess why we're starting that way, it's because of this right here. We have lost our first love. Can you remember that first time you experienced or you met Jesus? Can you remember the first time you encountered the Holy Spirit? Can you remember that first time? Maybe it was in a church service. Maybe it was a camp meeting. Maybe it was a little country church on the edge of town. I don't know where it was or when it was. Maybe it was youth group. Maybe it was a Sunday morning. Can you remember that first time that Jesus just began to change everything? Can you remember? Anyone in the room remember? Now, just put your hand up. Does anyone remember? Do you remember what that felt like? Now, Think about the difference between where you are now and where you were then. And you're like, no, no, things change. Yeah, things change and our relationships grow. But this, 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 this recommendation that Jesus has to the church in Ephesus, he says, listen, you're doing so many great things. In Revelation 2, he says, listen, you're doing all these great things. That's so good. I'm so glad you're doing great things. To the church at Saints Church in Glassbury, he says, you're doing so many great things. I'm so glad you're doing City Serve. I'm so glad you're doing the English language learning program. I'm so glad you're serving your community. But church, have we lost our first love? We don't come to church for us. We come to church for Jesus. 
I don't know about you. Psalm 38 4 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that He is good. Taste and see that He is good. There, the psalmist writes, My heart and my flesh cry out for you, the living God. Your spirit is water to my soul. You ever felt like that? As I'm reflecting on what was and what would be in a new year, I, I just keep about thinking about my sons. And the truth is, the only way that my sons are ever going to understand or, or know what it is to love Jesus and to live a life of passionately following Jesus is if they see mom and dad passionately loving Jesus. And it can't look like me being a professional Christian. Because that's the temptation of what I do for a living, is that I become a professional Christian. I only read the Bible when I need to find a word. What I hope my sons see is somebody who loves Jesus, who loves the presence of Jesus, who's desperate to follow after him in every area and every facet of his life. What I hope my sons see is somebody who prays, not because he has to, but because he wants to draw near. Because I actually believe it in James 4, 8 when he says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. And I understand that I need to draw near to him because he's been getting closer this whole time. And I just keep walking away because I'm busy and I've got plans and I've got ideas and I've got schedules and I've got things to do and people to meet. And so I've just been walking away from him this whole time. So the reason he says draw near to me and I'll draw near to you is not because you need, you need to make the first move. It's because he's chasing you and you just keep running away. He says, stop. For a minute, let me get close. Because your intentionality of stopping and turning, he's just going to run right into you. Because he's right here. I have to apologize to the PowerPoint and the presenter. PowerPoint, well, we haven't used PowerPoint in a decade. Uh, to the Pro Presenter team, because we're about to go very rogue. <laughs> and so if there's no scriptures on the screen, it's entirely my fault. Matthew 7, verse 21, says, Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. If you have a paper Bible, you should probably highlight that. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Are you questioning your salvation yet? I do every time I read the passage. I'm like, dear Lord, am I going to make it? Because I do all kinds of things for Jesus on the regular. I mean, they're my things for Jesus, but I do my things for Jesus all the time. He says, listen, it's not about your things. It's about my things. It's about our hearts being aligned. It's about having a relationship. It's not about performance. It's not about you showing up here on a regular basis just to check the box to say that you showed up here on a regular basis. It's not about giving because you think you're going to get something back. It's about giving because you're giving in response to his goodness and you're being faithful to his word. Because above all else, we believe that his word is true and we live by the standard of his word. Because we build our life on a firm foundation in the same passage. It skips ahead and says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise like a person who builds on a uh, house on a solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. You might have waves coming. You might have storms coming. There might be winds blowing. But my question is, who are you building on? But anyone, listen to this, anyone in verse 26 of Matthew chapter 7, but anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. Now, here's, 
Here's the thing about this portion of scripture. We have heard this time and time and time again, right? Like, oh yeah, build on a firm foundation. We even sing a song, my hands a firm foundation. No, 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 no. We like, we, we're, this is our jam. I'm building my life on Jesus. Do you know who this is for? We go, oh, this is for all the people that don't know Jesus. Their life is, you know, their, their life is, is built on all kinds of things. No, no, no. It's for the believer who knows Jesus but who doesn't listen. Like, no, that's not my interpretation of it. Let's read it one more time. But anyone who hears my teaching So you're probably not going to hear his teaching unless you come to a place where there is teaching. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rain and floods come and winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. If there's areas in your life, and if there's areas in my life right now that are collapsing, it's because there are areas that are built on my ideas, not on God's ideas. Because the winds and waves will come. But you'll make it through. You know, the, I think the, the best and worst Bible verse in Scripture is no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You're like, oh, come on, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Come on, I'm, I'm going to need some help today. Because I gave you permission earlier just to shout and to stand and to wave and hanky, but that's fine. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It's my favorite scripture. Listen, I, I, you should rethink your favorite scripture because it says no weapon formed against you means a weapon will be formed against you. Not only does it say a weapon will be formed against you, it says it will not prosper. So when I think of weapon, I think of a gun. I don't know about you, but that's what I think about. It's not historically accurate, I understand. But that's what I think about. What The best analogy I can give when it says no weapon formed against you shall prosper means there might be a gun in your face and they might pull the trigger, but you're still going to live. And you're like, I don't, know that, I, don't, I don't know that I like your Bible. <laughs> now, what we don't like is that there's uncertainty. But where we find certainty is in following Jesus. Here's the bottom line. I want to know Jesus. I don't just want to know about Jesus. You know, you know I'm going to give you a phrase that you can use. Anytime you need me to repeat something, you just say, run it back. And then I'll just say it again. I got that from my good friend Greg Hendricks. He just says, if you need me to repeat something, you just say, run it back. So here's what we're going to do. What do you need me to do? Okay, great. I want to know Jesus, not just know about Jesus. I'm going to take it a step further. I want to be known by Jesus. In Matthew 7, it says, you shout out my name, and I don't know you. I need, I want to know him, but I want to be known by him. I want him to see my face and smile and go, Brett, good to see you today. And just keep walking. When you get to heaven, I don't want the conversation for too long, to be honest. <laughs> let's, not, let's not go into the past. Let's just focus on the future. Good to see you too, Jesus Christ. Uh, that's how I hope, I hope he's just going to see me like, yeah, come on through. Come on through. Come on through. Like, I don't... <laughs> Back in the day, there's a big youth conference in Edmonton, and I, I used to—I was an intern there, and, and Pastor Randy used to work there, and 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 there was this test. Our, our executive director, he wore a backstage pass, and it was an all-access pass. But for every security volunteer, we said, "Listen, it doesn't matter who tries to get backstage. If they're not wearing a pass, they don't get in. That's the rule, right? Backstage pass." Well, every once in a while, somebody who who needed to get back there, like our executive director, Mike Love, would try and walk back there. And if he didn't have his pass, it was the volunteer's job to say, I'm sorry, I can't let you through. We were singing earlier, I get to live with you forever. Did you ever have that moment where you wonder if you're going to get up there and be like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to let you through. The reality is we don't have to be worried about that if we have an actual relationship with Jesus. 
personal relationship with Jesus. I'm not talking about just like church attendance relationship with Jesus. I'm talking about an actual one where he talks to you and you talk to him and you walk with each other and you go through life with one another and you do this together. I want a real relationship with Jesus, not just a framework of belief. I don't know how many of you have, have seen on, on the internet or on, maybe it's just me. There's all these ads that like pop up on, on your social media and everything's a, fra a framework for success. Here's a framework in five easy steps to acquire two apartment buildings and just set your income on, on, on repeat. Everything's some sort of framework. I'm going to give you a five-step framework to do this. I'm going to give you a five-step framework to do that. I'm going to give you a seven-step framework to guarantee success in your life. Listen, I'm going to give you one step, and there's no framework. You need to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Real relationship where you submit your life. This is what a relationship with Jesus looks like. I'm sorry, I should let you clap. This is what a real relationship with Jesus looks like. I give my whole life to him. In the book of Matthew, it says, I love the Lord with all my heart, my soul, my strength, and all that is within me. Meaning I hold nothing back. That's, that's what a relationship with Jesus looks like. I love him with all my heart, my soul, my strength, and all that is within me. I don't know why I'm looking at my notes. They're not going to help me. Let's go to Luke chapter 4. I want to share with you Jesus' first message in his hometown. We started a series that this will have to fit into called Jesus Changes Everything. In Luke chapter 4 verse 14, it says, Then Jesus returned to Galilee filled with the Holy Spirit's power. So, Actually, let's back it up. All the way at Luke chapter 4, verse 1. In Luke chapter 4, verse 1, then Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. He returned from the Jordan. So Jesus gets baptized. The Holy Spirit descends upon him like a dove. He's full of the Holy Spirit. Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, says in Luke 4, verse 1, says he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. In the wilderness, he gets tested. He's fasting. He's praying 40 days. You're like, man, we're starting a new year. Are we doing fasting and prayer? Yeah, let's do it Jesus style. 40 days. Jesus goes out, it says Jesus was out there. And then in Luke 4, 13, well, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. So the devil tries all these things over and over and over again. Jesus wins, he passes the test, he fights back with scripture. They get into this like Bible verse quote off about who's right. Why? Because the devil always comes as an angel of light. He comes with a deception. He twists the truth. And the only way you can, you can really fight back is by speaking and declaring the 100% truth of the word of God. Satan tempts us. Here's what it says. Satan departed from him until an opportune time. Here's what we need to understand. Satan tempts us during opportune times. He tempts us during opportune times. He tempted Jesus. He said, listen, why don't you just turn some stones, turn some rocks into bread because you're hungry. Listen, if I'm, doing a, if I'm fasting and praying, which we're going to do at the end of January here, three days, like, oh, my goodness. If I'm fasting and praying, I can tell you, if I watch TV, every single commercial is a food commercial. <laughs> the devil tempts me at opportune times. Verse 14, then Jesus returned to Galilee filled with the Holy Spirit's power. So he went in the desert full of the Holy Spirit's power. He returned full of the Holy Spirit's power. Why? Because even when you walk through difficult seasons and temptations and trials, if you're operating in the Spirit, then he will give you strength. He's going to put his Holy Spirit strength, power, energy into you, even when it doesn't naturally make sense. So Jesus returned to Galilee filled with the Holy Spirit's power. Reports about him spread quickly through the whole region, and he taught regularly in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. He shows up, he starts speaking to Jesus. You're so amazing. You're so funny. Don't you love the way that he tells a story? Wow, there's an authority when he speaks. He goes around to every synagogue. People are saying nice things. That's probably a bad sign. Verse 16, when he came to the village of Nazareth, so this is his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on Sabbath. I'm just going to stop there for a moment. You probably need to underline as usual because if Jesus went to church every week, so can you. He probably didn't need another message. 
but he wouldn't miss an opportunity to worship. He went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and he stood up to read the scripture. It was their tradition that everyone would stand to read the scripture and then they would sit for the teaching. So the scroll of the prophet was handed to him. So someone just picked, they gave it, said this is what you're reading today, it's the book of Isaiah. So he didn't pick the book, but he picked the place. He found a place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Then he rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and he sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue looked at him intently. This is the first message that Jesus spoke in his hometown. And he reads the scripture, and everyone's just looking at him. Their eyes are focused. Where is he going to go with this? Where is he going to take this? Because what Jesus is doing right here, he is rolling out his mission statement, his values. You know, like every company has a vision statement. You've probably forgotten the one at your work. It's fine. Every company has one, visions, missions, values, all those things here. We just go with, we follow Jesus one step at a time. That kind of trumps everything all the time. He says, this is what I'm going to do. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim that captives will be released. That the blind will see, the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. And all the eyes focus on him. All the eyes focus on him. Then he began to speak. The scripture you just heard has been fulfilled to this very day. Mic drop. I'm the answer. Verse 22. Everyone spoke well of him and was amazed by the gracious words that came from his lips. How can this be, they asked. Isn't this Joseph's son? This is positive feedback. Oh, isn't this Joseph's son? This is amazing. He's, he's so nice. He's so polite. He just speaks with authority. He's, probably, he's pretty funny. I don't know what he means by the next phrase. Their eyes were focused and attended on him. They're like, oh, man, this is really great. But then he continues. Uh-oh. Verse 23. Then he said, you will undoubtedly quote me this proverb, physician, heal yourself, meaning do miracles here in your hometown like you did those in Capernaum. So word was getting out. Just do what you did over there because we're here to be entertained which is the default position of most Christians in the 21st century. But I tell you the truth, no prophet is accepted in his own town. Certainly, there were many needy widows in, Elijah, in, in Israel in Elijah's time when the heavens were closed for three and a half years and severe famine de devastated the land, yet Elijah has not sent to any of them. He was sent to a foreigner, a widow, widow of Zarephath in the land of Sidon, and many in Israel had leprosy, leprosy in the time of the prophet Elisha, but the only one healed was Naaman the Syrian. And when they heard this, the people in the synagogue were furious. He just made racially charged statements in church. They're like, no, 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 no. We're not talking about those dirty sinners, those other countries. We're not talking about that warlord that God healed. We're just going to forget that portion of scripture. No, no, we're talking about the Savior of the world's come to save us. And the tone changed. And then they started using the same words with a different vibe. Matthew 13, 35. Is this not the carpenter's son? That same thing that was a compliment gets turned into an accusation. The son of Mary. Is not his mother called Mary, his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. In Mark 3, another parallel. Then they scoffed. To scoff is to speak in a scornfully derisive and mocking way. They scoffed. He's just the carpenter, the son of Mary. They were so mad. So mad. They went from loving him to hating him in a moment. Why? Commentator Daryl Box says this remark of Jesus is strong for two reasons. It, number one, compares the current era to the listeners of that day. It compared them to the least spiritual period in Israel's history. So Jesus was commenting without having to comment. And then... It suggests that the Gentiles, who were intensely disliked, which is a polite way of saying they hated everyone who wasn't one of them, they didn't like the idea that maybe they were worthy of a savior. That prophecy started to rub them the wrong way. There's another one in Isaiah 11:10. It says, And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse who shall stand as a banner to the people, for the Gentiles shall seek him and his resting place shall be glorious. 
Jesus was making the greatest announcement in the history of the world. Salvation is here and salvation is for everyone. Here's what I'm here to tell you today. Simply this. I'm here to tell you that Jesus died for the world 2,000 years ago and that no matter your ethnicity, no matter your background, no matter where you come from, Jesus can, will, and wants to save you. I'm sorry. I'll run that back. I'm here to tell you that Jesus died for the world 2,000 years ago and that no matter your ethnicity, your background, where you come from, what you've done, who you know, Jesus can wow, Jesus can and will save you. See, it's easy for us to condemn those that were listening to those words going, come on, what was the big deal? Just a few Gentiles. It's easy for a room full of Gentiles to say, what's the big deal? That's who we are. We're direct beneficiaries of this pr prophecy. Unless you're a Jewish person in this room, the rest of us are Gentile. This word is for us, that Jesus wants to save us. It's easy to condemn those people. I can't believe they'd be mad at Jesus. But for us today, we must destroy. This is what we have to do. This is our cross to bear. This is our get angry moment where we get angry at the preacher. We get angry at whoever's saying it. We have to destroy the idol of a savior of our own making. Where he does what we want, how we want, when we want, if we want. Where church service functions in the way that we think it should within his proper operating parameter. We must choose Jesus and choose to follow him with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. Anything less is to eat the bones and spit out the meat, trying to nourish our soul with tidbits and sound bites. I was going to be encouraging in 2020. Here's the response of the people. I need to wrap this because kids are going wild. I can feel it in the spirit. <laughs> when they heard this, the people in the synagogue were furious. Jumping up, they mobbed him and they forced him to the edge of the hill on which the town was built and they intended to push him over the cliff, but he passed right through the cloud, crowd and went on his way. They tried to murder him by throwing him off the cliff. Ironically, when Satan tempted him, and he took him to the highest part of Jerusalem, and he said, jump, and the angels will save you. Isn't it interesting that we begin to see the very spirit that they were operating in? Yeah, we're good. Jesus' first ministry. We're going to look at four core ministries of Jesus over the next four weeks. Jesus' first ministry was salvation. Okay? His first ministry was salvation. That was his first goal. I've come to bring the good news to the poor. Is this okay? Can I just share one thought with you? Thank you. If you said no, I was going to anyway. Jesus came to preach the good news to the poor. That's what he said. We're just, we're just understanding the core ministries that Jesus laid out in his mission statement in Luke chapter 4. In, in Greek, there are two words. In, that's the language that the New Testament is written in. There's two words for the poor. There's panas, which is the working poor. And there's tukos, which is the begging poor. The begging poor meant that they can't do any work. If someone doesn't have any mercy on them, then they will die. That's the begging poor. In case you're trying to keep score, we are spiritually the begging poor. We can't earn our way to heaven. We cannot do enough good deeds. We cannot be perfect. We're humans and we make mistakes. We're all sinners and therefore we need a savior. Jesus said that he's come to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. My friends, can I tell you, it's 2024, it's a new year, and what time is it? It's the acceptable time of the Lord. It is the time of the Lord's favor. The time of the Lord's favor has come, it says in Luke 4:19. In 2 Corinthians 6, it says, for God says at just the right time, I heard you, I heard you, I heard you 
on the day of salvation I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. It's a messianic quote from Isaiah 49. It includes everyone, Jews, Gentiles, rich, poor, young, old. The gospel, and you're going to get offended with this statement, but you just have to listen to it and not listen to it through the lens of culture. The gospel is the greatest inclusion document in the world because it says anyone and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You're, see, we don't get offended when we hear it because we're like, oh, we're all mostly beneficials of people who've been saved. We're, get it. We're, like, we're with you. Salvation's good. But maybe next week you'll preach a message for me. No, this message is for you because every time you hear about salvation, every time we sing about the blood, every time we think about the cross, we should be full of gratitude and gratitude that doesn't end. Gratitude that ends up with me standing up and ugly crying and getting so full of thanksgiving that I just can't keep it inside me. Because Jesus came for me. He sees me. He knows me. And that's the scary part. He sees me and he knows me and he still loves me. And he still saves me. The first ministry of Jesus was salvation. Anyone and anyone who, anyone and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We get offended not at the idea of Jesus coming for Gentiles. We get offended at the idea that Jesus came for them. Hey, Daniel, you're in the house. You're in the house. We get offended. I'll just say this. Run it back. We don't get offended at the idea that anyone in a racial context can get saved. We're okay with that. We're beneficiaries of it. We get offended when we say they can get saved. A group that we've deemed unworthy, unlovable, maybe even disgusting or despicable. We're like, no, 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 no. If it's good for us, it ain't good for them. No, no, no. If it's good enough for you, it's good enough for them. Because he knows you. You're a sinner and they're a sinner. We're all sinners falling short of the glory of God. So this is a place where anyone, regardless of background, regardless of lifestyle choice, can come. Now, Shane Pruitt says it like this, and I'll just use his word. The goal of the gospel is not to affirm you, celebrate you, or accept you. The goal of the gospel is to rescue you, transform you, and redirect you. following my heart. Ezekiel 20, 36 says, and I will give you a new heart and I'll put a new spirit in you. I'll take out your stony and your stubborn heart and I'll give you a tender, responsive heart. I say all this to say, today is the day of salvation. Today is the acceptable year of the Lord. If you're following Jesus, every time you hear the gospel, every time you hear the good news, you should be full of gratitude. We should repent of our hard hearts that says they cannot be saved. No, they will be saved. And Jesus is sending you and he's sending me into the dark spots to turn the lights on. And so we get reminded of the ministry of Jesus because the ministry of Jesus is the ministry of you and the ministry of me. Not that we can save anybody, but we're here just here to turn the lights on and point the way to Jesus to say, he's going to transform you. You can come and be born again. Now is the accepted time. Now can be the day of salvation for you. Hebrews 3 verse 7. This is why the Holy Spirit says, today when you hear his voice, it's my prayer that you would hear the voice of God today. Hebrews 3 15. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes all across this place. We'll end it right here. Two things. First things, if you're already a follower of Jesus, and you would say, man, I think my heart is closed to some people.
as you're praying that prayer, say them, say it by name. Say their name. Say their name. God, help me to love this person. I thought they were too far from me. No one's too far from me. I repent. I'm sorry. Second thing. Today is the acceptable time of the Lord. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day you've come and you've experienced, you've tasted and seen of his goodness. You didn't understand it. You can't quantify or describe it, but what you understand is that you are loved and that you're loved by the creator of the universe. And if you're here and you're anywhere within the sound of my voice in this room or on the internet, you say, I want to give my life to Jesus. Here's what I'm going to invite you to do. It's going to take courage. And this is going to be scary. And I'm, I just, we have to be bold in this new season. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. If you say, I want to invite Jesus into my life, I'm going to invite you for the very first time. If you want to invite Jesus into your life for the first time, I'm just going to invite you to stand to your feet right now. Stand to your feet right now. Say, yeah, that's me. Everyone, no one's looking. Just stand to your feet right now. Say, yeah, that's me. and you say, I just can't move right now, just grab your phone right now and text the word Jesus to 587-400-201. Just text it right now. Quickly. We're going to pray this prayer together. We say, Dear Jesus, I need you now more than ever. So I give you everything. My wins and my losses, my sins and my successes, they're all yours. Jesus, Forgive me for going my own way. From this moment forward, I give you my whole life, and I'm following you. In your name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, if you need prayer for anything, I want to invite you forward. Yeah, I keep cutting off the claps. That's my own fault. If you need prayer for anything, our prayer team's here. We want to pray for you. Thanks for staying in church a little longer the Holy Spirit is ministering to you. Come back next week and take a step of faith this week and invite somebody to church with you and say, you know what? Do you want to sit with me? I bet you they'll come with you. We love you. Our Sunday service might be over, but church is just getting started.
Jesus. 